director of the Hudson Shakespeare Festival. And we have a very brief um, thing that we're going to do tonight. We, we acquired uh, an extraordinarily rare piece of script that we're going to present for you. This, uh, this was, and I, I want to explain just a little bit. 400 years ago, um, when Henry Hudson was going up and down the river that actually coincidentally bears his name, he, he had with him a 40, mid-40ish William Shakespeare. And, and what they would do is they would sit on the deck during the day and admire the beauty of the Hudson River Valley. And in the evening, they would go down below deck and quaff the mead all night long, and then go back up on the deck. And Shakespeare was so inspired by the beauty of the Hudson River that he wrote a script about it. Now, unfortunately, because of the amount of quaffing of mead that went on, the script was lost. It has been lost for hundreds of years until recently a fisherman who was actually able to fish in the Hudson <laughs> And in that booth was a small bit of fragment of this script, which archaeologists and professors at Columbia University were able to reassemble and to try to give us a sense of this play, which we, and it is the only fragment that remains, and it's about two minutes long. Now, because of the vast resources necessary to present this piece, we've only been able to do it once before. And we're going to do it again tonight, and we have our videographer with us tonight, who's going to record it for posterity. So, um, I, so uh, without further ado, I present to you the Knights of the Scenic Hudson. <laughs> Why I'm so sad. Sad? How so in such a green and cuddly place? Aye, there's the rub. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this Hudson, tis indeed fair and comely, but much afflicted of late by the common curse of mankind, folly and ignorance. How so, noble brother? Are not this, is not the riches of this place a great entail left by us in trust for our countless kinsmen to follow? Without a doubt, wise brother. Then why permit me the rapacious view to besmirch the noble river views, to blast away the noble hills, foul the great oaks, foul the waters pure, to trade for a few purses of gold the immortal inheritance of our people? Tis indeed a great and vexatious puzzle, brother. <laughs> But this folly should not a cause for sadness be. Do you forget the Duke of Poughkeepsie and his noble band? <laughs> the Knights of the Sydney Hudson! Do not. I know them well, but truly have they the power to stand against the tide? Aye, they do! Did they not save yonder Storm King Mountain? <laughs> Indeed they did, noble brother, but did they not bring to heal the monstrous cement plant of the evil merchant of St. Martin? Indeed they did, but had they not vowed on the graves of their kinsmen to save from a fate most dire 65,000 acres of these hills and vales, what they call the lands that matter most? So have I heard. Noble brother, but have they not the hearts of lions, the canny sense of the fox, a talent for making the noble princes of the house of Albany do the thing that is right? <laughs> Without doubt they do, noble brother, but I say... Then why, doubting brother, think you they will not save these fair lands that matter most? Forsooth, if I could but speak! <laughs> speak! I stand not in your way, and... Hang on every word. <coughs> Brother, tis so. I know them as green knights, faithful and brave. But remember, nothing will come of nothing. Many ducats in gold of the realm, this they need to save the land that matters most. Truly said, brother. But look you round. <laughs> See these noble people of this valley, this Hudson, these lovers of immortal Shakespeare. These people of culture, of courage, fair in aspect, too. <laughs> <laughs> the people are wise and generous. Generous indeed. <laughs> they will not fail. And our children and their kin will doubtless gaze, like we do tonight, on this noble vista. Brother, truly said, and thanks. My soul is not troubled. I'm quite pleased. So let's away, and on with Pericles. <laughs> oh. 